All right, so what is a line of uh, latitude? Latitude uh, circles the globe parallel to the equator. It's these horizontal lines are a great way to remember that this is uh, latitude is lateral or a sideways orientation. Uh, the way I think about it for latitude is it sounds like ladder, right? So if you were to look at this globe here on the right-hand side, it looks like the rungs of a ladder, right? You could sit there and climb the globe. Um, so latitude, ladder, that's how I think about it. They're the lines that go this way. Um, anyway, so lines of latitude, the equator has a latitude at zero degrees. It cuts the, earth, the globe in half, right? Uh, each degree north of the equator is increased by one degree until it reaches a 90 degrees north latitude. Each degree south decreases by one until it reaches negative 90 degrees south latitude. Uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory, right? So every single rung is one degree, right? Until you get to the North Pole, you're on the North Pole, you got 90. Uh, the way that you can think about this is that it, it actually creates an angle through the core of the Earth, right? So if you have zero here at the equator and then you have uh, a line shooting out of the top, it makes a right angle and that's like a 90 degree angle, right? So... Longitude, uh, the way I think about longitude is long, like long longitude, they're all the same size. So if you look here at lines of latitude, as you get closer to the pole, the actual the line of latitude actually gets smaller and smaller. And the 90 degrees, so if you're at the North Pole, it's, it's literally just vertical. It's like a, like a vertical line, like a stick, right? Uh, so, but lines of longitude, however, uh, they're the exact same size around the entire globe. So lines of longitude connect the North and South Poles. When you're looking at a globe, they are the vertical lines that run up and down. So every single line of longitude is actually the same distance, right? Because it's just going around the same way in a sphere, right? Um, so just like how, uh, and I think that's the next slide here, just how lines of, uh, you know, we have a zero degree for latitude running on the equator. We also have zero degrees for a line of longitude and it's running vertically down the prime meridian uh, which passes through Greenwich, England. So uh, if you go to the west of it, you know, or if you go uh, west of the prime meridian, uh, you're going to be a negative number. And then if you go to the east of the prime meridian, it's going to be a positive number. Um, there's actually on the other side, you have the international date line as well. But the international date line is kind of, it's, it's not a perfect uh, line of longitude. Uh, that's mainly because geopolitical reasons. Uh, that like where people define where the day starts. Um, but there is obviously the other side of it. So uh, longitude actually goes from zero to 180 because 180 is halfway around a circle if the circle is 360 degrees, right? Longitude goes from zero to 180. Uh, latitude only goes from zero to 90. So, all righty. So that's how I think about it. Latitude, ladder, right? Longitude, long. So all the long lines, all the ladder lines. It's, it, it, it's a... It's a nice little like you know way to remember it, um, and I even I find myself today sometimes I'll just be like, wait, which one's which? Ladder, ladder. Okay, that one. So it it, it helps. It's a little little mental device here. Um, so moving on here, uh, as you can imagine, latitude and longitude lines intersect and create a grid system that you can use to pinpoint locations. Right? Makes sense, right? Where does this line of latitude and this line of longitude, uh, you know, intersect? What what point on the globe is that? And we're going to go through how to do that. So every single line of latitude or longitude can be divided into degrees. So degrees can be then sub subdivided into minutes. And that doesn't actually have anything to do with time, um, but it's just a way to be more specific when you're using lines of latitude and longitude. Uh, fun fact, I don't believe that uh, the FAA will quiz this, but minutes can also be subdivided into seconds. So just like there's 60 minutes in an hour, there's 60 minutes in a degree. And then every single minute can be subdivided into 60 seconds. It has nothing to do with time. Uh, that's just what they call it here. So uh, let's see what's next here. Yep, there we go. It's the next slide. Man, I'm just teaching my own material here. Uh, each degree is broken down into 60 minutes. So one degree is made up of 60 minutes. Yep. So for example, uh, we would take uh, 35 degrees and then count up 35 degrees, one minute, two minute, three minute, all the way up till 60. And then it goes to 36 degrees, right? Uh, and like I said, those can be subdivided even in seconds, but we're not going to get into that. Um, all righty. So here's an example, right? Find the Taft Kern County Airport at 35 degrees north and 10 minutes north. Sorry, 35 degrees and 10 minutes north and 119 degrees and 28 minutes west. Uh, if you see, so there's a couple like nomenclatures for uh, latitude and longitude. If you see the classic formula here of 35 degrees and 10 minutes, 
it, it'll be shorthanded like this. So it'll have the little degree symbol and the minutes are gonna be uh, just like a single apostrophe. Uh, if you see seconds, uh, it's gonna be quotations, uh, the, the double apostrophe. Uh, also, you'll see decimals. So sometimes you'll just see 35.18354, something like that. Uh, that's just because it'll be more specific. Uh, on your sectional chart, though, so the way that these charts are designed, that you're flying an airplane, you know, and I, I know that we're doing the, the whole drone, uh, uh, you know, fly, you're flying unmanned aircraft, but still you got to be able to read a sectional. And what you're doing is when you look at a sectional, you got to look at it on the go and on the fly, and you have to be able to figure stuff out, right? So it needs to be pretty easily legible, right? So decimals doesn't really make sense for us, right? So that's why we use the minutes. Uh, oh, and the other thing I was going to mention also is that it says north. Uh, earlier we were talking about plus 90 and, and negative 90. Uh, if you just if you just use the north and the west, then you're not going to use positive and negative. It should, it'll just be north. And then instead of negative 35, 10 would be actually south, if that makes sense. Uh, west is just to the west of the prime meridian, and east is to the east of the prime meridian, obviously. But uh, you're not going to see the positive and negative when you use the cardinal directions. So, all right. Uh, so let's do this example here as I keep babbling on. Uh, so 35 degrees north. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here on our line of, uh, uh, and one other thing that's kind of funny about this is that in order to like to find the latitude, you have to use the line of longitude. And I'll show you what I mean here. So for example, this right here. So this right here, it goes like this and it's like a, a rung on a ladder, right? So we know that's a line of latitude and it says 35 degrees, but the actual line itself doesn't help you find latitude uh, because the next line of latitude is going to be up here. That's charted. And that's actually going to be uh, 35 degrees and 30 minutes. And what I mean by that is, so say you, you look here, there's a bunch of little tick marks and those are going to be your lines of latitude. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten's the big one, right? So if you see 10, so 10, 20, 30 is your other big one, right? And of course they put a real line at 30. Uh, what I'm trying to get at here is that this is actually a line of longitude. And what you're doing is they have tick marks on it for your lines of latitude. Can be a little confusing to wrap your head around at first, uh, but don't, don't let that, don't let that get to you. Don't let that bother you. Um, anyway, so uh, I digress. We're coming back to this example, 35 degrees north. So we have the 35 here. That's your first step is finding where the big numbers are, right? Sometimes on these charts, you gotta, you gotta like search all over and then you find one in the corner and then you gotta go from there. But so right here, we have a 35. There's also a 35 over here and you're gonna see the numbers on the whole degree. So what I mean by that is that you're not gonna see a, a 35 and a half up here. So we know 35 degrees north, so we're there and then 10 minutes. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 is the big mark. So we know that it's gonna be somewhere along this line. Now, if you're a smarty pants and you jumped ahead, you can pretty much tell that Taft Kern County Airport's already right here. So there you go. Like I said, these questions are really straightforward. And heck, you didn't even have to know how to do the West, right? You just had to know how to do the line of latitude. So if you just know the line of latitude, you can figure out the question with, without even doing half, half of the problem. So anyway, but... Um, We'll now do the, the line of longitude. So the line of longitude now is 119 degrees. So you'll see here in our previous example, here's the 120, right? So we know it's not 120, that's not what we need. So if you come back here, there's no number here and we know that it skips it. So that's gonna be 30 degrees. So then we're gonna come back here and here's the 119. Okay, so this is a better example because you can actually see the 119, the 30, 119, 30 minutes, and then 120 right here. So we know that it's greater than 119, but less than 120, so it's in here. It says 28 minutes west, okay? So uh, we know this is 30. So you go 30 minus two is 28 right there. And there is your line of longitude. So we know that the airport's gonna be somewhere along this line. And if we take that 10, cause you can even use this one right here, 10, there's the 10, right? And you know that it puts it right here, the Taft County, uh, Taft Kern County Airport. Taft Kern, anyone been there? Seems like a, seems like a nice, Nice airport. I'm guessing it's in California. This looks like it's California. I don't know. I'm just saying that because the topography here. 
Rancho Marietta. Yeah. Baker. Oh, Bakersfield. So Bakersfield's in California. Yeah. So this is like north, just north of LA. Okay. Cool. Making sense so far? There's no, there's no, I haven't lost anyone yet. Look at that. We still got stragglers coming in. Well, we got, we got 14 people now in the chat. Welcome everyone. Um, maybe that may, you know, I, maybe we'll just have to keep getting started later and later. I don't know. I like starting on time though. Okay. Oh my goodness. Is that it? That's pretty much it. That's the whole lecture folks. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to practice now. So it says top five questions. I think I've got like 10 questions in there just because the lecture is so short. Um, but let's just hop into it. Uh, so what you need to have out is you need to have your, um, your uh, testing supplement out because that's how you're gonna get the, uh, the figures here. Um, so if you don't have the testing supplement, let me go ahead and find a link to that real quick, actually. Testing supplements. And I'll make sure that everyone has that here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the link to it. I'm gonna throw it in the chat. Let me know if this works. Okay. So you should be able to click on that. That's just the FAA testing supplement. That's what you'll have on your exam. Uh, and they just, it's all the figures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to, I, I don't think I have the, uh, the photo here, wait. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. So for some reason, I don't have the photo for this one, but we'll, we'll go to, we'll start on number two here. Okay. So, uh, number two, uh, question number 51, referring to figure number 26, which I have blown up conveniently on the right-hand side. Uh, what airport is located at 46 degrees North, 56 minutes of latitude and 98 degrees West and 41 minutes of longitude. Um, actually, I don't really like how this question's worded because look at that. They spelled out mins, M-I-N-S, and that's incorrect. That is not how you show minutes in Liza Launch Two, but I'm gonna give it, you don't see the link in the chat? Oh, I sent it to the panelists. Okay, thanks, Justin, I appreciate it. Let's send it to everyone. Oh, so I said earlier, we're gonna get started in a moment and nobody saw that in the chat, in the chat. My goodness, goodness gracious. Okay, panelists and attendees, I just sent the, the, the testing supplement out in the chat. It's a good thing to save and have on your computer because then you can reference it. I know in our practice exams, uh, we reference the testing supplement uh, also, but I do have the map blown up here on screen, so you should be fine, uh, but it's, it's a good thing to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it like a minute here. Go ahead and try and answer this question. I'm going to give it just a minute. I want to see some answers in the chat. All right. Rob's coming out saying it's C. Anyone else? Anyone else? Bueller. All right. looks like people are coming up with C. Let's see how uh -huh, uh, i get that one let's see let's see how that one goes uh so referring to figure number 26 what airports look at 46 minutes north so let's check that out here so let's find the first step is find the biggest numbers right so we have a 47 and a 99 okay so uh 46 is less than 47 so we know it's going to be south of this line here uh 56 minutes of latitude right so uh 56, so 60 minus 56 is gonna be four. So we're just gonna count down four. One, two, three, four. And guess what? If you're already an A-star student, you already know it's along this line. And we've already figured out that we're looking for, we have two airports, right? So you got the Jamestown Regional and the Barnes County, right? So here's Barnes County, Jamestown Regional. Guess what? You can get rid of the Sprague Airport. So now you already made it 50-50, right? Your odds have increased. That's awesome, okay? Next, we have 98 degrees west and 41 minutes of longitude. So we have 99. So 98 is gonna be less than that. Look, here's the 98 too. So you know it's gonna be somewhere between these two. And that already rules down Jamestown Regional, okay? I didn't even do the entire problem. You know, you can just, you can deduct through, you know, uh, deductive reasoning here. So anyway, 41 minutes, we'll complete it. So here's 30, right? Here's the big tick, that's 40. So 41's gonna be right there. So what intersects right there? It is the Jamestown Regional. The answer is C. Nice job, Rob. Nice job, Glenn. Uh, Y'all get a A plus star. And everyone else who didn't answer in the chat, I want some more participation. Let's get a little, let's, let's, get, let's get talking here. All right, Jamestown Regional, sweet. Man, we're gonna be blowing through these. All right, what do we got next here? Question number 50, refer to figure number 23. What is the significance of the flag located at 32 uh, degrees and 22 minutes north? and 81 degrees and 18 minutes west. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? What is the significance of the flag located there? All right, I'm gonna give it like a minute here. I wanna see some participation. 
See, Rob and Ford already messed up. They already outed themselves. They, they've already participated. All right, Julio says C, VFR reporting checkpoint. Okay, anyone else? All right, Glenn comes out and says C, nice. All right, well, guess what, folks? The answer is in fact C. Now, the reason why I included this question uh, is because it, it's kind of like a little, uh, it's not a trick question by any means, but it's like a little um, uh, a shortcut. So for example, do you even need to go do the latitude and longitude to figure out what that is? If you know what the flag is on a on a chart, if you already know that it's a that it's a VFR reporting checkpoint, you don't even have to go look for it because you know that the only flag that there can be on a sectional chart is a VFR reporting checkpoint. I digress. We're gonna go and uh, we'll we'll look at it. So here's uh, north of thirty two twenty two. So here we have let's find let's find our numbers right. So there's no numbers on that one. Ah, there's a number right here. So there's thirty three. So we said thirty two twenty two. So you know it's gonna be less than that's that's thirty. 230 so minus eight from this so you got uh there's a big one right there's a big one so it's going to be probably somewhere somewhere along this line okay and then you have uh 81 18 so there's 81 and 18 is going to be uh let's see there's 10 there's 20 so 20 minus 2 18 oh look at that puts you right there actually i should have done this one so 10 20 minus 2 18 right there there's springfield and there is a little uh, Springfield's underline, and there is a flag. That flag does mean it's a VFR reporting checkpoint. What does that mean? A VFR reporting checkpoint is an area on a sectional chart where you, uh, if you were to call ATC, air traffic control, and you were to say, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to be flying my drone over here at Springfield, uh, they're going to go, boom, they know where that is because it's on the chart as a VFR reporting checkpoint. Uh, that being said, you don't actually need to contact ATC to go fly in Springfield. Why is that? Because it's class G airspace uh, up to uh, 1,200 feet here. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go study. And if you do know what I'm talking about, come attend my lecture on airspace. Uh, like I said this earlier, we're going to keep rotating through them. Uh, the answer was C, if you have a point checkpoint. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back and do another airspace lecture for all you, for all you new folk. All right, there we go. We got another one. Question number 52, you've been hired to inspect uh, the tower under construction at 46.9 North and 98.6 West near Jamestown Regional. What must you receive prior to your flying your unmanned aircraft in this area? All right, Ryan and Mark, Julio, A, Glenford, A, Robert, A, you know what's funny? When like someone's like puts like A, right? And then A is the wrong answer. And then everyone else also starts putting A because they see it blowing up in the chat. But the answer is in fact, hey, yeah. Doesn't make sense. Authorization from the military, you know, you, you, it's never gonna happen. Authorization from the National Park Service, no. Nah. So the answer is in fact, hey, that is correct. Um, the, the area that they're referring to, um, I believe is just this restricted area, but let's find out. You've been hiring to inspect a tower in a construction at 46.9. So here's an example where you'll see 46.9. Uh, so here's 47, so 46, oh, I guess they're not talking about that. There's 46 and then 98.6. So, uh, 98.66 is going to be more than 50. Oh, it's just the class E airspace around Jamestown under the tower near Jamestown regional. Yeah. So the tower under construction is going to be in this area here, which is class E airspace. Uh, you don't need authorization from the military or the national park service to operate in class E airspace. So. Ta-da, good job, everyone. That's kind of an airspace question. But you see what I mean? Like, you don't really... Now, that one you would have to go look up. So you got to see what kind of airspace you're dealing with. Um, all right. Uh, question number 54. What is the line of latitude uh, area four measure? Rob says B. Carlos says B, north and south. So the answer is, in fact, uh, I'm going to say B. Drew's like east and west, uh, east and west. Nope, the answer is north and south from the equator. Remember, latitude means ladder. So... You climb on it like a ladder It goes, uh, it measures north and south, even though the line goes like this, you're measuring north to south. So cool, answers B. Nice, all right, we got a couple more here. Uh, here's just another sectional question because uh, why not? You got no sectional knowledge anyways. Uh, on a VFR sectional chart, what is a R? Ah, what is an R with a circle around it represent? Sorry, I didn't mean to yell there, but I accidentally showed the answer. So <clears throat> hope you didn't see it. Uh, if you did see it, then pretend you didn't. Uh, what does an R with a circle around it represent? Anyone? Yeah, Carlos says C. Yeah, Julio says C. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I messed up. 
the, the issue was my finger was like pressed down and I was trying, I didn't want to like let go of it. If I let go of it, then it would show the answer. Yeah, uh, the answer is C, private airport. The way I think about R with a circle is that it's restricted. So R restricted as in like, yeah, I know I gave away the answer. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Uh, the, the answer is uh, it's, it, it's like it's restricted. So it's like private. So that's how I think about it. Uh, private airport. I think we got another one though. So not to worry, not to worry, folks. Uh, question number 56, what airport is located approximately 47 degrees and 40 minutes north and then 101 degrees and 26 minutes west? What airport is that? All right, well, yeah, Garrison. Okay, so people are saying, hey, nice. And I'll go through it real quick. What airport's located 47 degrees and 40 minutes north? So first steps are always remember, find the big number, right? So there's a 48 right there. So 4740, so you know it's gonna be minus 10. So it's gonna be somewhere along this line here, right? 4740, okay. And then 10126. So you have 101 right there. 26 is gonna be like right uh, there. No, that's wait, 10, 20, 26 would be like right there. So, I mean, that's that and then what i say 47 40 oh 47 40 i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah. so there's 48 47 30 so there's 47 40 boom and intersects right there garrison your screen covers the latitude number on the chart uh actually there's a there's a there's a line of latitude right there so 48 degrees and then there's 101 degree right there so i hope that uh i hope you can see it your screen covers the latitude number on the chart yeah well, there's two numbers right there in the middle of the chart. So um, anyway, so, but it sounds like everyone got it. So Garrison Airport. Awesome. And you know, if you guys are finding this easy, that's good. You know what I mean? That means that you understand it. It means you know how to do it. So uh, it's really not a complex topic. Uh, once you, once you do a couple of them, they're all kind of this, you know, cut and dry the same thing. So, all right, uh, here we go. Ooh, this is a fun one. Uh, Cause this is like a two part question. You gotta know both parts. So what is the height EGL of the tower located at uh, 4714 North and 9811 West? Will I be able to watch this again? I'm so lost. Oh no, Charles, Charles. Yeah, you can absolutely watch it again. Uh, speak up, man. What are you lost about? What's going on? Am I, am I moving too quickly? Am I too fast? And you know, if, if I'm you know, trying to do this at work, I'm so distracted. Ha, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, these are recorded. It's also live on Facebook. So it'll be in the group. You can watch it on Facebook. In fact, I should say hi to my Facebook folks. Rob says, see, nice, Rob. Let me, let me just go check Facebook real quick and make sure uh, that it is in fact live streaming after I just went through everything already. Lovely. Um, let's go check uh, university. All right. Well, Rob got C. Um, is everyone else, is everyone else getting it? Cause only one person's answered C so far. So come on, everyone, everyone, when it was the easy question, everyone was like hopping, hopping on it. Right now it's a little bit tougher question. People are like being a little more reserved. Um, no shame in getting a question wrong. No shame whatsoever. We are here to learn. Yeah. So I'm live on Facebook right now. So you'll be able to, Oh, Eddie, Eddie's on Facebook. Awesome. Eddie, welcome on Facebook, man. Sorry I uh, uh, have neglected. Okay, so we got a couple here. And this, this is good. I like when people have different answers because then it creates a conversation, discussion, right? So Rob says it's C, Julio says it's A, Carla says it's C, uh, Ryan says it's C, but then changes his answer to actually A. We're all over the place and I love to hear it. So we'll go through it. First of all, let's locate the tower, right? So what is the height AGL of the tower located at 4714? So here we have 47. We know 10's right there. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we know it's gonna be pretty much along this line here uh, where the restricted airspace is. So that's, that's pretty convenient. So there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right there. Okay, I'm gonna leave my mouse there. Uh, and remember when you're taking a test, what I usually do is I just put, put my finger there. And then, and then as I go look up the other thing, you know, and then I kind of do one of these things and, can bring my, my fingers together. I'll show you a pencil. So you, it's like a straight edge, you know. Um, 98 degrees west and 11 uh, in 98, 11. So let's find the, the 99. So the 99 is here. So 98 is going to be here. There's the 98 and 11. So there's 10, 11. So we know it's right there. It's along this line. And then we have, uh, well, well, I said it's like just short of that. So 
Okay, so here's the tower. We've located the tower. Now there's a 1729 and a 306, okay? The 1729 is, uh, is referring to the MSL altitude, okay? The big number is the MSL altitude. Uh, what is AGL? AGL means above ground level. So when we look at this chart, uh, the ground, I'll answer that question in just a moment, Charles. Let me finish this. So uh, the ground goes like this, right? Like there's all sorts of topography, uh, you have mountains and like you know valleys and stuff. So the ground's always changing. But when you're flying an airplane and a drone, of course, but when you're flying an airplane, you want to be able you you're flying in the air. You don't really care, like you care how high you are off the ground, but you don't want you don't have the calculation, like you don't know how what ground elevation it is all over the United States, right? So what you do is when you look at your chart, you want to be able to look at your chart quickly, know that oh daggum, there's a there's a there's a, a obstacle right here. And it's at 1,700 feet. How high am I off the ground? I don't want to have to do that math like while I'm flying. I just want to look at my altimeter and see that my altimeter says 17 or says nine says 2,000, right? My altimeter says 2,000. It's over 1,729. Woo! I've got 200, 280 feet of clearance, right? I'm not going to hit the tower. Okay, so that's why it's in the big number. The small number is going to be the AGL, and that's going to say actually how high the tower is off the ground. And the tower here is exactly 306 feet. Um, now, a cool little trick you can do is if you want to figure out what ground elevation is at that specific point, you can take 1729, the MSL altitude, and subtract 306, because 306, how high it is above the ground? So, it, so uh, the, the elevation of the ground there is going to be 1729 minus 306. So you're looking at about 14 uh, 1423 is going to be the elevation on the ground. Not that that's really important right now, but just to provide context. So the answer is, in fact, C. Oh, oh sorry, C. Uh, how'd y'all get A? Were you looking at the wrong tower? Oh, you're probably just looking at the wrong tower. Ah, uh, okay. So everyone got the MSL versus AGL. It was just the wrong tower, y'all. Y'all were looking at this tower. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's all good, man. So that's why that's why it's a tricky question. You know, you gotta you gotta stay on your toes um, and and really double check your work. Uh, Charles asked a question. My first question is why West ninety eight is actually east of your starting point. Okay, so when it says West ninety eight, what it's referring to is that you're ninety eight lines or degrees west of the prime meridian. So in the United States, the United States in general is west of England, right? So everything that we're going to do is going to be west. If you go east of England, like Germany, Russia, China, anything east of England, then that's all going to be east, right? Uh, so that's why it's west, right? Uh, when you're saying it's actually by the... Uh, uh, daggum, I just lost the question. When it's, when it's east of your starting point. So... What you're doing is you're just looking for reference. So, so the numbers are going to increase from right to left, if that makes sense. Because the further left you go, the further west you go. So that's why the number here, 98, is going to keep going up, 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 up. And then here's 99, because you're continuously going west. So uh, that's why the number gets larger. If you start off at 99, you're looking for 98. So in this example, I found the 99 and it's 9811. You just go to the right because it's going to be less to the right, if that makes sense. Charles, keep the questions coming. I love questions. I love talking. All right. Uh, oh, wow. Look, we have another one too. All right, here we go. Uh, figure number 26. Uh, you've been commissioned to fly in a wildlife pre preserve located at 4740 North and 9831 West. Can you accept the job? What are we thinking? Oh, he goes, LOL, I meant no. Yeah. Ryan says C, Rob says C. Okay. So uh, we got a healthy mix, and I like that. Like I said, a nice healthy mix. All right. Um, oh, my goodness. I hope you're really not hearing my Facebook go off because that's really annoying. And I'm just going to close my Facebook. There we go. Okay. Um, so 4740. So here we have... Um, 47, right? Uh, and then so we have, there's, a, there's a big number. We know this is 4730. So 4740 is going to be 10 plus the 30. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's the big number. So it's right there. Okay. So there's our line of latitude. And then we have 9831. So we have 
98, here's 98, 30, 31, boom. Okay, so there's the Johnson Lake National Wildlife Refuge. That right there is where you're gonna be flying, okay? Uh, looks like a kind of a cool spot. So uh, did you actually have to find it on the map to answer the question? No, but anyway, that's where it is. That's what it's talking about. And that's what a wildlife refuge looks like. Uh, the answer is C. Uh, you, you can, so we'll talk about why A is wrong. A is wrong uh, because you are able to fly in a national wildlife refuge. Uh, just because it's a wildlife refuge doesn't mean that you can't fly there. Uh, the way that I would proceed about doing that is, it, 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 I guess, in life, but it's particularly in aviation, um, it's always better to exercise caution, right? You always want to be in the clear. Like, you don't, you don't want to, I'd rather you ask first rather than the area around it reads restricted. Yeah, so, so Charles, so what that's referring to is, is this. So uh, this thin hatched line, this blue line, that is a restricted area. This whole area like this, this blue, that don't get it confused with the magenta. The magenta is a MOA, but uh, the blue thatched line are restricted areas. So R540, R540, or R540, 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 um, those are the restricted areas. The actual wildlife refuge is not a restricted area. However, it's in a wildlife refuge. So it says, no, you can't ever enter restricted airspace. That's not true. You can fly in restricted airspace. You just need to have prior authorization from air traffic control. So that's why the answer C is correct. Uh, can you fly in a national wildlife refuge area? The, the, the answer is yes, you can. Um, however, uh, if I were you, I would call who's ever in charge of the national wildlife refuge, and I would make sure that they're okay with it. Uh, I know you can legally do it, uh, but it is always better to dot your T's and cross your I's Wait, I said that backwards. Dot your I's and cross your T's than to find yourself accidentally busting some sort of airspace or something and then getting in trouble, losing your certificate, losing your drone, right? I mean, that would just be an absolute mess. The FAA will come after you. It, it's, it's a mess. So always ask first, even, even if you can legally do it, just, you know, a quick phone call, five minute phone call can, can save you a lot of hassle. Uh, you would have to look more into the wildlife uh, preservation rules and stuff. Um, I know there's a couple like special rules. I don't know them off the top of my head, but in general, you can fly in a national wildlife refuge. That's why the answer is C. So, okay, cool. Q and A time.